Well, welcome to our, our second annual public information session for water and sewer. Since we're recording this um, and uh, uh, since I'd like to make sure to focus on the key points in the presentation, I'm going to read a little bit as we, as we go along and, and add a little, a little bit just to make sure I, I maintain my focus. And if you have questions, um, <clears throat> Uh, if you could hold them to the end, I would appreciate it. Um, if you have a, an overwhelming need to have a question answered, s still hold it till the end <laughs> until. <laughs> you can't hold it, the bathroom is in the bathroom. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the presentation is, is going to focus on uh, where we are now. Um, where we need to go to the, in the future and, and how we're going to get there. But the key topics are the status and funding for the septage receiving station, uh, the Thompson Street Road water and sewer reconstruction, um, and issues involved in developing a sustainable future for the department. Um, just to review what was what we did in 2018, um, <clears throat> we completed the design for the septage receiving station, um, and I will go into the status of the septage receiving station separately. Um, we received uh, two loans, uh, SRF loans for asset management plans, one for water and one for sewer. Those plans are currently being developed by Woodard and Kern. We did a major uh, upgrade of the supervisory control and data acquisition system. That's the SCADA system. Um, <clears throat> and I will explain that a little bit later too. We refurbished the sewer pump stations to extend their useful life. Um, we completed work on the computerized maintenance management system, the CMMS system. We did a leak detection survey and replaced two hydrants. Um, we managed to uh, save about two and a half million gallons of water that way. Uh, so our leak rate now is, is way down. Uh, we completed work on our safety trailer, so now we have a trailer to take all the equipment we need out for main breaks and other emergencies. And as you can see, we've almost completed the office, the new office and the new conference room. <clears throat> so what is the status of the septage receiving station? <clears throat> um, Basically, we, uh, we are at the point now we are advertising for, advertising the RFP for construction. Uh, contract award is, for that is due in, uh, in April. And we should be starting construction sometime in May and finishing in November or December. Just to review a little bit uh, for people who aren't familiar with the receiving, re receiving station, this is an equipment layout of the station um, that shows a number of the of key features here. Um, these these two squares are the or two two rectangles are the uh, screening equipment for septage. Um, we are putting in one, and this one uh, we uh, will order in the future if we, we find we, we need more volume. Um, this is the, uh, <laughs> is the dumpster, and this is the, uh, this is the grit chamber, uh, or grit, grit chamber and the, uh, and the grit screening equipment. Um, this, is, this is the flume right here. So septage from the town flows in this way and it will be screened by a piece of equipment right here. <coughs> and this is the uh, electrical room where all of the electrical panels and electrical gear will be. This is the new site plan. As we 
um, as we developed the design and looked at um, some of the issues involved in uh, <coughs> uh, constructing the building. Um, we changed the location of the building somewhat. We were initially going to put this building right on top of the existing site. Um, but we found that by moving this over, we could use the existing site during construction um, so that we can continue our septage receiving operations and then switch over to the new, uh, to the new building once it's done and the equipment is tested. This is a rendering of the steel building that we will be put up, be putting up. Um, those two large doors there are, are so that we can access the, the septage uh, screening equipment. The smaller door there so we can access the dumpster and the grit removal equipment. And then the little brown door is for uh, access to the uh, electrical room. There will also be uh, <coughs> solar panels on top of the building for heating. This is the unit that we will be using for screening town sewage. And as you can see, it will be uh, located in the, in the flume itself. This is the screening equipment for septage. Um, <clears throat> the septage, uh, septage will flow in through through this piping, it goes in here. There is a perforated barrel in there that spins around and what uh, the uh, uh, wastewater uh, <clears throat> and uh, solid waste goes through there and then, is, then goes back into the flume. And the non-biological solids are transferred up, the, up, the, up this column and um, dumped out onto a conveyor belt which goes to the uh, goes to our dumpster. <coughs> this is the <coughs> the grit removal equipment. There is a um, <coughs> uh, uh, a piece of equipment that separates out grit and that, that's particles of sand and small stones. Um, uh, that are now going directly into the lagoons and filling them up. Um, this separates those out and the grid is then transferred um, using that piece of equipment to a, a, a bin where it can be removed. <clears throat> this is the Portalogic dump station. Um, our dump station will have two connections so that we will be able to handle two trucks at one time. Um, the haulers come in, connect to, uh, connect to uh, the piping there. Um, they put in their code, which opens the valve and allows them to dump. Uh, the system also monitors the, the, the beast to make sure that it's operating properly um, and will protect it by closing the valve in case it's too full to operate. Um, wait till the level goes down and then it will open up again. Um, this also sends um, billing information directly to the office computer. So what was done in 2018 for the, uh, for the septage receiving station? When we purchased um, the steel building, it was delivered and it's sitting there on site under tarps right now and snow. Um, <clears throat> uh, the mechanical screening device for septage is under contract and it's being manufactured. Uh, so is the screening device for town sewage and so is the grit chamber um, and the construction RFP is uh, being advertised and will be issued shortly. This is the current project schedule that we got from um, our engineers. Um, the, uh, the two main dates there are, uh, are highlighted, contract award April 19th, and final completion November 30th. Uh, 
Um, we submitted a warrant article asking for additional funding for the station. And the key question here is, why are we asking for this funding? <clears throat> Uh, basically, we don't want to stop <laughs> uh, uh, stop work and, or delay the project because of funding issues. Um, the original design for the station was changed um, as we as we worked on it and developed it, and the construction has been delayed due to. Um, contract issues and, and NHDES review, which has taken a lot longer than, um, than we had expected. As a result of this, the cash flow for the project has changed, and we may require additional funds uh, to meet our monthly expenses. So we're asking the town to approve um, uh, uh, or to allow us to uh, borrow an additional five up to additional 500k if we if we need to during the project oh, Sorry um, This is a list of some of the additional project costs. I, um, I mentioned the SCADA upgrade earlier um, we had planned to put SCADA equipment in the um, <clears throat> Uh, in the septage receiving station, and this is this is um, equipment that protects the uh, protects uh, uh, electronic equipment that protects the screening equipment, um, and and warns us. Um, and we'll send a warning to Rusty's phone if something happens and needs to be taken care of, and we'll even allow him to make some um, corrections by phone. Um, so it will save us a lot of time and, and um, <clears throat> it will uh, also save money by protecting some very expensive equipment. Um, the problem, oh, it also collects important data that we need to send to NHDES, such as the flow of septage and sewage into the, into the lagoons. Um, when we looked at the SCADA equipment for the entire system, for the water system, um, we found that that equipment was sadly out of date and would not be compatible with the new equipment. Um, they could have jury-rigged it, but we decided it would be better to replace that equipment. And so the cost of, of doing that was about $146,000, something we hadn't planned on. Um, the cost for engineering services during construction um, was higher than um, we originally anticipated, um, or our engineers originally anticipated, uh, because of NHDES requirements. They wanted an engineer on site um, <clears throat> all during construction. And so the engineer not only reviews and looks at, at what's being done, but also monitors um, things like the American iron and steel requirements and the labor requirements as well, um, and verifies that people are getting paid properly and the right people are doing the job. So they do have to be there during the construction. Cost of the steel building increased about $25,000 from the time we started until the time the uh, the, the bid went or, or until the time the bid went out. Um, some of that was due to increased steel costs during that time, and some of it was due to some additional changes that we made to the building. Um, the the major change was um, a change in the. Um, uh, insulation, the type of insulation that we were going to put to the building. And we also made some, some change, some structural changes to the building to make sure that the building could take, um, <clears throat> uh, take snow load and, uh, uh, and wind. Um, 
We are anticipating now about a 5% increase in the construction part of the uh, uh, of the contract just because it's been delayed from fall to spring. Um, there's also going to be a cost for removing the old grid chamber on Collins Street and we don't really have an estimate uh, for that. Um, we're assuming around twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars for that. That's what they said. What? That's what they said. That's what they said. Okay. <clears throat> now the cash flow analysis itself um, is is fairly complicated. Um, <clears throat> uh, what we need to do, uh, what we needed to do with this analysis, was determine. Uh, whether we had enough cash to make the monthly payments during construction. Um, and it's further complicated by the fact that we have the septage receiving station and we also have two asset management plans being done at the same time, all being funded by different SRF loans and grants. And uh, some of that is being funded by our cash reserves. Um, and our income from septage receiving. So we need a way to calculate all of that to make sure that we have, we'll have enough cash on hand to make our payments. So what we basically did was take the net income from septage and sewer, um, added that, added to that the ca our cash reserves and the reimbursements that are due to us from the Northern Borders Regional Council. Um, the drinking water and clean water, uh, clean water uh, grants and loan disbursements. Okay, so during the during the project, we can submit, uh, you know, we can submit invoices to DES against the loan, and then they will send us a check for the loan. So if all of that happens on time, as promised, then. Um, then we would be in good shape. We're not anticipating that that's going to happen, however. Um, so from that, from that total amount there, we subtract the water and sewer operating expenses and the construction expenses. Now our, opera our operating income goes up and down during the year. This is also one of the problems. It's lower at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year, and it peaks during the summertime. Our expenses <laughs> uh, stay basically the same, so um, calculating this can be kind of difficult. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm going to show you the cash flow charts and then some simplified versions of it so you can see some of the problem areas that could occur. But the reason we would need additional funding, some additional funding, um, is that shortfalls could occur um, on a monthly basis during the project, especially in May, June, and November. Um, now, because of the way the, the cash flow analysis was, was constructed, um, if sewer and septage income and expenses uh, uh, if, uh, if septage and sewer income is lower than expected and expenses are higher than expected, um, that could contribute to cash flow problems. Um, if septage income is lower than expected due to construction, in other words, if construction interferes with the haulers trying to deliver um, septage, um, that would be a problem. We make about Five hundred, more than five hundred thousand dollars a year on septage deliveries, and that five hundred thousand will go a long way towards helping to pay for our expenses. But that money has to come in at the right time, and um, you know we are hoping that that we are able to bring in that amount of money this year, but we don't know what's going to happen during construction. So. Um, if some of the septage income is needed for other expenses or emergencies. Now, you'll see later in the presentation that we've spent the last four or five years 
taking care of a lot of the problem areas in both the water and sewer system so that now we're not spending a lot of time taking care of emergencies anymore. We're doing plan maintenance instead. And that has been a, um, a big change in the way the department has, has operated. Um, so we're not expecting emergencies, but emergencies do occur. Um, if, we have, if the reimbursements from NRBC uh, or uh, NHDES do not meet the schedule, um, we could have cash flow problems. And the total of that amount of money is 255000 So a remaining 220000 from northern borders and uh, the rest from, uh, from the two <coughs> SRF loans from DES. And the final unknown really is cost overruns. Um, the project itself is, is cost, more, cost more than um, we anticipated or than was estimated by our, our engineers. Um, <coughs> and <coughs> changes during construction can be very expensive. Engineering changes during construction can be very expensive. So. Um, that's, that's a big unknown. Now, this is the whole analysis that was, was put together. Um, Eli took a, a, a look at three years worth of sewer, septage, and water income and <coughs> expenses. And then, and then we, we took an average of that and, um, and uh, uh, also uh, uh, put in a factor for, uh, uh, for um, inflation. Um, our engineers took a look at how much we would be paying on a monthly basis during construction and what the reimbursement of money should look like if they follow on time. Um, we're a little leery because NRBC, <coughs> our NRBC money was, some of it was delayed because of the government shutdown. Um, we don't anticipate another shutdown, but we, uh, they tend to be slower than DES in, in reimbursing money. Um, <coughs> The green area, uh, the, green, the green box here shows the monthly contract expenses. Um, <clears throat> almost all of those are, in, are, are over 200,000. The highest one is 600,000. Um, <clears> and the red box shows the reimbursements. So if those reimbursements do not come in on time, we could be short in, in uh, one of those months, especially towards the end of the project. So this is a more simplified view of the same project uh, or the same cash flow analysis. And this one looks at, uh, at cash flow using, uh, using one scenario, which is to um, <clears throat> pay for, um, let me make sure I have this one right now. I, I can't really tell by looking at it. Um, this is if we were to pay for expenses using, um, using uh, septage receiving funds and supplementing those funds with from our cash reserves which are about um, a million and a half right now. <clears throat> Not all of those reserves can be used for sewer however some of those are water reserves. Um, and what you see here in the green box is the highest um, of the net contract expenses and then um, <clears throat> The, uh, the septage in receiving income in those months um, 
is lower than the uh, is lower than the um, is lower than the net ex the net contract expenses. Um, <clears throat> so if we do not get reimbursements here, um, those are the months under that scenario that we would could possibly have a problem. And this is the this is another view which looks at paying for all the expenses from our capital reserves or uh, our cash reserves and using accepted receiving income to supplement that. And in this case, um, you can see that, that we run out of uh, cash reserves towards the end of the project. That's in the box in red. And um, <clears throat> again, delays in, in reimbursements or higher than expected construction costs could, could cause a problem there. Um, we hope none of that happens. Um, and we hope that we do not have to borrow um, the entire $500,000 to cover those expenses. The good news is that we can repay that money without penalty. Um, and we should have enough money at the end of the project to do that. Uh, I have two different uh, loan schedules, so you can see what the difference in cost would be um, to the department. This is the one. This is the 1.5 million dollar loan that we've already received from NHDES, and the cost of of that loan is uh, one million three hundred ninety eight two hundred fifty nine thousand dollars. So the cost of the loan is less than the loan we're taking out, and that, which is a really good deal, I think. Um, and the reason for that is that we get we are being given ten percent principal forgiveness, um, and we're doing it in, in ten year in, uh, in a ten year loan. Uh, the same repayment schedule for a $2 million loan shows that um, the, the cost of that would be $1,979,000. Uh, Again, lower than the $2 million um, that we would originally borrow. Um, and part of that is because the forgiveness is, is more, $300,000 instead of $250,000. So the comparison here is that um, the $2 million loan would cost us about $502,420 more than the $1.5 million loan. So we are hoping to uh, borrow $1.5 million, to make, it, make it through with the $1.5 million loan, hopefully. Um, but but we will have an, an extra five hundred thousand for a backup if um, if we need those funds during construction, and we hope very much that the town will um, will approve that. The next topic is the uh, Thompson Street reconstruction project. Um, at the SB2, there was a lot of discussion about Thompson Street. <laughs> Seems to be a rather sore issue with everyone. Um, and a couple of key questions came out of that uh, for which we didn't have answers at that time. So we want to we want to focus on the water and sewer part of that, but um, we can also show you what the town portion of that will be as well. Um, this is the loan schedule that we we just got from NHDES for the uh, 1.8 million dollar loan for the road. <clears throat> now, this is a 20 year loan schedule, and the total cost of that loan would be two million eighty six thousand five hundred and thirteen dollars. So. That was the first question. What is the project going to cost? And the total project, the road, water line, sewer line, will cost this much. Now, other questions were, well, how much is the town going to pay and how much is water and sewer going to pay and, and what will the tax impact be? 
Um, and we said at the time that was difficult to calculate for several reasons. One is that the, the nature of the loan is that um, <clears throat> the repayment decreases on a yearly basis because the payment is based on the remaining principal. So every time you make a principal payment, the amount of the repayment for the next year decreases. Um, and you can see here the payment starts at 131000 about 132000 and ends at 83000 That's for the entire loan. Now of that, uh, the town is, pays about 78%, 78% Seventy-seven point five percent, and water and sewer pays the rest. So the town portion of this would be one million two hundred fifty-four thousand seven hundred ninety-eight dollars. Um, now the box in green shows you what the tax impact of that amount would be, and it would start uh, in two thousand twenty at at thirty-four cents, which is. Thirty-four dollars per hundred thousand, and at the end of the project in twenty, or at the end of the loan in, in twenty thirty-nine, the cost would be twenty cents, or twenty dollars per hundred thousand. So it varies throughout the loan, and the second part is that that the town has other funds that can be used to decrease the tax impact. Um, including um, the block high rate grant, which is about fifty thousand dollars a year. So, um, <clears throat> a lot of this loan could be paid for just just from that alone. And then there are capital reserves for roads. Um, there is money from the DPW budget, and there is money from the unassigned fund balance. So. The select board will have flexibility in, in being able to repay that. As far as water and sewer is concerned, the big expense here is for water, which is 287500 approximately. Um, and that will have to be paid for using, uh, uh, using water revenues. A small portion of that can be covered from septage receiving revenues, but most of that will have to be covered from water. Um, the sewer portion is $77,982, which would be paid for from, really, by septage receiving. <clears throat> um, I mentioned before that we, we have two asset management plans being developed um, through SRF loans. One of the SRF loans uh, has principal forgiveness, and the other SRF loan works like a grant. <laughs> because clean water and drinking water at DES have different federal funding sources and they have different requirements. and so. We have. We also have. Uh, uh, we have to deal with both of those things, but basically, um, on uh, on one one is for. Do you remember what those are? One was. One we get back fifteen thousand, and the other one we get back twenty thousand. <clears throat> Asset management is a very important part of um, uh, our present and future as far as the department is concerned. <clears throat> um, without it, we really wouldn't be able to uh, predict what our future costs will be. Um, or prepare for those costs, or set rates accurately, um, uh, or, or manage our equipment 
and manage our assets. Now, asset management is fairly complicated. Um, and I have a definition here. It is a systematic process of operating, maintaining, upgrading, and disposing of assets cost effectively while maintaining a level of service that is acceptable to customers. So we look at every single asset in the system. Um, we look at the above ground assets and the below ground assets. Um, <clears throat> We look at how old they are. We look at how important they are to operating the, the system. We look at how much it will cost to replace them. And we look at their uh, life cycle and see what their useful life is and determine when they will need to be replaced. And all of that is determined on the level of service that we as a department and we as a community would like to have or think we need to have. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, an asset management plan involves two things. It involves doing a written plan where all of the assets are listed and all of the studies on their importance to the system and the risk factors and criticality issues are, are examined um, <clears throat> and put down. Um, the, uh, the uh, <clears throat> capital improvement plan is generated from, from that information um, and uh, the future funding plan and financing plans are developed from that. And, um, <clears throat> and all of this data is, is put into a computer and needs to be updated on a yearly basis. Um, as do the other systems that are part of asset management um, so that we have a, a pretty accurate idea of what our costs are going to be in, uh, now and, and 20 years down the road. Now asset management um, takes information from the uh, geographical information system which we've already developed. And that's where we get the list of all the assets. And that's where we have the location of all the assets. And that's where we have the specifications for all of those assets. And you can see here, this is an outline of the sewer system. Um, it's a little fuzzy up there, but you can, you can see where all the lines are. And, um, <clears throat> We have all the manholes, all the pipe sizes, um, <clears throat> all the valves, everything that's part of the system, the pumping stations, all of that stuff is located in the GIS system. The computerized maintenance management system is also part of the asset management system and as I said we completed this system this year and this is just a sample of uh, a screen from the uh, com computer program, the MVP computer program that we use um, for doing this. And again, we take the list of assets from, uh, from the GIS system and put them in here. Um, an analysis was done on all of our equipment to see what maintenance needs to be requ what maintenance is required and when it is required. Um, <clears throat> We, uh, the system then schedules and tracks and documents maintenance so that we know what maintenance has been performed on every single piece of equipment, every pump, every valve, um, uh, uh, every fire hydrant. Um, so we can evaluate the condition of the equipment as it goes through its, its useful life and anticipate when that item needs to be replaced in order to ensure that we have the level of service that we, we want. Um, it also provides the maintenance procedures. Um, it also tells us where to order the parts, how much they cost, it helps us manage the parts inventory, and uh, allows us to perform an audit on our equipment, which is important for um, keeping up with uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the uh, guarantees on the equipment. 
and, uh, and it certifies that the maintenance has been done and done correctly. Now, we're in process of doing the, the asset management plan right now, even as we speak. <laughs> Uh, we, we've actually already done the first parts of this, the uh, asset inventory and mapping, which was done in, uh, in GIS. Um, they are performing the critical asset condition assessment, so they've sat down with Rusty and gone over the records um, to determine um, what condition our existing equipment is in. Uh, <clears throat> They take each piece of equipment and do a life cycle cost analysis. So when you buy a piece of equipment, there's an expense to buying it. And then there's a cost to maintaining it. Um, and then there's a cost to um, removing it. Um, so all of those costs are considered when you do asset management so that you know what that piece of equipment is going to cost you over a lifetime and you can prepare for those costs. <clears throat> as well as replacement cost. Um, we are going to have a level of service meeting with um, NHDES and the engineers that are doing the, uh, doing the planning. Um, and we're going to be inviting people from the select board and the planning board, um, electric department, so that they can see what this is all about. Uh, <clears throat> and members of the public who might be interested in, in sitting in on this, especially water and sewer customers who um, really have an important say in what level of service they want. Um, because the higher of level of service, the more it costs. Um, the capital improvement plan comes out of this, as I said before, and this is the plan that takes all of the assets, puts them on a timeline, and tells us when they then when we think they will need to be replaced um, and how much that will cost. Um, when I did capital improvement for the town, I used to include inflation factors, so we would take current costs and and increase those costs by the cost of inflation over over the number of years that, that we would have that piece of equipment. And then we add it, you add up all of the columns and you get the yearly um, expenses that you need to plan for in order to keep your equipment running and in order to replace it when it, it needs to be replaced. Um, cost of service and rate analysis. Um, this is going to be critical going forward. We need to be able to set rates that will pay for our expenses. Um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, but not be uh, we don't need to bring in more money than that. We don't need to make a profit here. We just need to pay for our expenses, and those include operational expenses and capital expenses. Um, we are in the position now where our rates are very low, and I'll be discussing that a little bit later. Um, and also, there's a financial plan and funding strategy. And our funding strategy will inevitably include the uh, <clears throat> the revenues that we generate from septage receiving, which are which are substantial, um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, so the revenues from uh, septage receiving and the uh, uh, and the income from water and sewer. Um, so those rates, the the. Uh, the rates uh, for water and sewer that, that ratepayers pay, um, those plus the septage receiving revenues have to pay for everything. And the, the funding strategy will involve putting money away, putting away cash reserves for large capital ex expenses, and using loans as we're doing now. 
and you can see the advantage of doing an SRF loan when you pay less back than you borrowed in the first place. That's a good loan. So where are we financially, at least right now, this year? Well, this is the end of the year. It's, we're two months in, so things have changed, but this is where we were at the end of 2018. Um, <clears throat> before I get into that, I just want to review water and sewer accounting. Um, water and sewer are enterprise funds, which means that we do not, uh, we do not uh, get any tax money to operate the water and sewer department. It's all funded by water and sewer rates and septage receiving. Water and sewer are separate departments and they're also separate funds and separate accounts, so they need to be kept separate. Um, <clears throat> the, the old joke uh, at water and sewer was, water and sewer, may they always be separate. Um, <laughs> that referred to more than the accounts. Um, basically, water rates must cover water operational and capital expenses, and sewer rates must cover sewer operational and capital expenses. Since septage receiving is a part of sewer, Accepted receiving revenues can cover sewer capital expenses too. However, some of the revenue from septage receiving or from sewer can be used to fund water capital improvement projects because sewer depends upon water. We wouldn't have a sewer system if we didn't have water. Um, so, um, determining that is, uh, uh, can be can be interesting from an accounting perspective because it's it, it's very hard to determine how much uh, uh, how much how much you put into how much effort is put into sewer and how much effort is put into water. Um, right now, we break things apart at about seventy. 8%, about 78% of our effort goes into, goes into sewer and about 22% goes into water. So we divide expenses on, those base, on that basis. Um, when we're doing a, 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 a water capital improvement project, we have to see how much of that project really depends upon sewer. And Thompson Street's a good example. There's only, uh, the sewer line only goes for 1,600 feet on Thompson Street, which is about a quarter or a fifth of the length of the water line. So when we replace the water line there, we cannot pay for half of that from sewer. <laughs> we can only pay for part of that based on, on the relationship between the two. So. That can be complicated, and that's why we have accountants to deal with that stuff. Um, this is just an overview of, of where we are now in terms of our cash assets in the bank. We have, uh, at the end of the year, we had about uh, a million and a half dollars. Um, we had another 50K in, uh, in uh, accounts receivable. Um, we had about 250, 255,000 in grants that were owed us, and we had um, uh, 236,000 in accounts payable. So our total cash was a little more than a million and a half at that juncture. Um, this is the information from I, I took from our detailed profit and loss report. Um, you can see there on the first line water and sewer income. Now sewer income includes both town sewer and septage. Uh, about a little over 500,000 of that is septage receiving and a, and a little less than 200,000 of that is 
uh, <coughs> um, sewer sewer revenues. Uh, you can see that our expenses, however, were rather large. We took in seven hundred and two thousand, and we spent over a million. A lot of that most of that was spent on the septage receiving station. So most of that was in capital expenses. Um, you can see that uh, about uh, close to 600000 was spent on capital expenses in sewer and about 40000 in water. So when, when we look at it, just to, to judge how our rates are doing, how our rates are paying for our operations, we take out the capital expenses and in the end um, we see that our operating income, the income that we got strictly from operations was about 277000 um, In water, water didn't quite break even, but it's closer than it has been in, in, in several years. Um, and that our total operational um, income was about um, <clears throat> uh, $2 million. Uh, are 275,000 for the year. I want to talk a little bit about rates. Um, and the question here is why do water and sewer rates need to be increased? Um, part of that answer is that costs increase every year. <laughs> um, simply due to inflation. Um, the, the average annual inflation cost in the United States over the last century is about 3% per year. Right? It goes up and down every year, but basically that's been the average. Um, so that's one problem that, that we face. The cost, of, the cost of equipment and maintaining the equipment can increase more or less than that um, each year, depending on the type of equipment. So if it's made out of steel and the cost of steel goes up more than the cost of inflation, the cost of pumps and valves and things like that also go up. The cost of steel buildings go up. Um, <clears throat> the second reason that rates need to be increased was that our rates were kept artificially low for many, many years. Um, and I will show you that information in a minute. How are rates set, or how maybe how should they be set? <laughs> and I already said rates must cover the cost of providing water and sewer services, and that means operating costs. Um, and operating costs are things like salaries and benefits, maintenance, repair, utilities, fuel, office expenses, software, billing, all of those things, and capital expenses, buildings, equipment, and vehicles. Um, and the rates must also cover inflation. Now, as you can see, the rates in Ashland um, where they're set now, they barely cover operating costs. So I'm talking about the sewer revenues and the water revenues, not septic receiving. Those barely cover operating costs. They don't cover capital expenses. All of those expenses either come out of cash reserves that we have or from septage receiving revenues. Um, our goal for rate increases. We, we have gone to a number of sessions at NHDES. I went to one this year on accounting for um, uh, small municipal water systems which we fall into quite nicely. <laughs> and we're, we're, we're going in April to rate setting for small water systems. Um, and and these, uh, these seminars are extremely helpful. Um, there's, a, there's really a hard bottom line to <laughs> to rate setting, and then there's sort of an art to rate setting as well. And our problem in Ashland, of course, is that the rates have been artificially low for years. Sewer rate hasn't been raised in 18 years. 
um, the water rates have been raised gradually, but they're not even up to where they were in the year 2000. Um, our problem in raising rates, however, is that our average income is, is the lowest in, in Grafton County. So um, we have a lot of people living in our town who are hard pressed to pay higher water rates, even though the, the cost of water is about 0.8 cents per gallon right now. <clears throat> You know, a little a little twelve ounce bottle of water can cost you two to three dollars, depending on where you buy it. And a gallon of water at the store, the cheapest one I saw recently was about sixty nine cents. And that water is not delivered to your house, and you can't go over to the tap and just open it up and get it. You have to go to the store and bring it back and lug it around. Um, so the cost of water is is, is really is really very low and our cost now we are down at the bottom of the list in terms of in terms of our rates in New Hampshire we're about seven or eight on the list um, in terms of lowest rates so we can't just say okay we're going to go from four dollars and seventy five cents to fifteen dollars uh, per hundred thousand cubic feet because that is really going to hurt repairs. It's going to really hurt people in town. We cannot do that. So we want to raise rates incrementally to cover the cost of inflation, to begin to cover capital improvements, and to cover um, additional NHDES and EPA requirements, which add to our costs every year. Um, here is a rate history, just to give you uh, an example. You can see that in, uh, in 1999, the water rate was $5.85 per 100 cubic feet. And the sewer rate was $7.70 per 100 cubic feet of water. In the year 2000, the rate was decreased to $2.00. It was raised in 2004, but we don't, we don't have records showing what that was raised to, so we don't really remember, none of us remember that. Um, the next rate increase took place in 2010, so it went from $2 up to $3.85. We have raised the rates each, each of the last two years, and we're intending on raising the rate this year again back up to what it was in 1999. Now, if you look at the next column over where it says 3% inflation, if the rates were raised to keep pace with inflation, the water rate now in 2019 would be $10.57. So we're about five dollars lower than that. Um, and down below, you see that this year, in 2018, water generated $166,000 in income. If we had been, if the rates had been adjusted properly, as they should have been adjusted. Um, <clears throat> The income from that rate, which would have been ten dollars and twenty-six cents, would have generated three hundred and fifty-eight thousand seven hundred and seventy-four dollars, which would have been enough to cover the capital expenses this year, and also enough to put away money um, for future capital expenses. Um, so that that really illustrates our problem. And, and sewer, you see the same thing. Sewer rates have not been increased. And we're not increasing them this year either because we really need to get water rates up and we have other income for sewer from septage receiving. But if the rates had kept pace with inflation, um, we would have taken in $340,000 in sewer um, when we only took in $194,000. Um, so that, 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 I think, illustrates 
what our what our problems are in, in dealing with rates and, and how we're trying to go about incrementally raising rates um, <clears throat> to meet our expenses. The asset management plan will tell us in great detail what the rates should be based on what our expenses are going to be, are and are going to be in the future. So what is the future of the department? Um, <clears throat> Before we get there, we can look at what we've already done over the past four or five years, um, and we've covered a lot of this before. We have the, we've done a GIS system, we've done computerized maintenance um, plans. Uh, the second phase of our asset management plan uh, is in progress. We have our septage receiving station in progress, um, and all of those things save us money. They cost money, but there are significant savings, long-term savings, from doing those things. We, as I said before also, we focused on um, fixing, uh, fixing, uh, uh, fixing our problems and, uh, and moving, moving from uh, emergency maintenance <laughs> to planned maintenance or moving from unplanned maintenance to planned maintenance um, and, and upgrading of assets. Uh, we believe it's important to keep up with technology because doing so saves money in the long run and it helps provide the level of service that we need. We have replacement strategies for our vehicles, for our meters, the water meters, for hydrants, and for scoping sewer lines, which is a DES requirement and is expensive. We've we have remote meter reading now, so instead of taking three days to read the meters, it takes two hours to read all the meters, um, and one day to generate bills. We've completed our safety uh, trailer, and uh, we're almost complete with our conference room and office next door. What will be needed in the future? Well, this is what we're, what we've been looking at um, for the for the past couple of years. The septage receiving station is just the first of the major capital improvements that are needed to keep the system operating um, at a sustainable level. Um, we are going to need a water treatment plant um, sometime in the future because of increasing salt levels in the aquifer. Um, DES is imposing stricter guidelines on water uh, water quality as well, um, and and so just uh, uh, water testing alone is going to be more expensive, and the results of that water testing might hasten the the necessity for a water treatment plant. Um, wastewater treatment plant is also something that we're looking at, uh, we're going to be needing in the next 10 years. Um, we are making that assumption. Next year we will have a study done on the lagoons to determine how best to deal with the lagoons, but lagoons themselves are um, <clears throat> being phased out that method of, uh, of wastewater treatment is being phased out and it looks like we will be needing to put in a conventional wastewater treatment plant. Fortunately, we already have the septage receiving station which will filter out all of the, uh, all of the, the non-biological solids uh, before it goes into the wastewater plant. So that, that will um, mean that the cost of that plant will be somewhat lower than, um, <clears throat> uh, than a normal plant would be. We need to replace the three pumping stations, the sewer pumping stations on River Street. Um, those stations were, um, how can I say this? They weren't top of the line? That sounds good. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
when they were when they were put in, we've had we've had problems with them. Um, we uh, Rusty refurbished them this year, and they're operating fine. So we've extended the useful life, so we can put in our septic receiving station and still have those stations be operable. But they are going to have to be replaced, and the cost, I believe, is around two hundred fifty thousand per station, depending on what kind of station that you get. Um, at some point, uh, well, we will be replacing all the wall, the older water and sewer lines in town. <coughs> that includes Thompson Street, Highland Street and the rest of uh, Winona Road. We replaced part of the water line there. We need to replace the rest of it. Um, we relined the sewer line on Main Street in preparation for the sidewalk project this year. Um, so that sewer line is in good, good shape. We are concerned about the sewer line that goes under the bridge by, um, <coughs> uh, by the monument. Um, and we will we will need to look at that carefully and um, replacing that could could be difficult and problematic for us so that's one of the lines that we're going to have to look at closely we will need to replace the old water tower at some time um, it, we we do maintain that and have it tested um, but it, it's old and will need to be replaced within the next few years and we may possibly need an additional water tower. Um, part of the reason is uh, is fire suppression. Uh, we have a, our, our existing water tower has a million gallons in it. Um, you could use all of that water in a major fire. Um, such as the mill burning down. Um, <clears throat> and uh, now when we have, uh, we have a fire, the fire department is supposed to contact us so we can turn the pumps on um, <laughs> and, and at least keep the water flowing out of, out of the town well while the, while the uh, engines are pumping. But if we had other, other fire departments come in, um, and hook up to other hydrants, um, we could run out of water very quickly. So that's a level of service issue. <coughs> these are not the only things that need to be done, but these are major, major expenses. And the, the total estimated cost of these things runs be somewhere between 14 and $19 million. Um, So in order to deal with some of these expenses, we have to have revenues to cover them. And we have to start saving for them now um, so that we, um, uh, we, can, we can build these things and fund these things. Oops. Something happened. You're at the end. I'm at the end, right. <laughs> um, so the final question is, uh, how should we manage the department? And this is a uh, an open-ended question. It's an issue that the three of us discuss frequently. Um, and it's a question that needs to be continually examined because of, uh, of uh, uh, if, if we want to have a sustainable system. Because things are constantly changing and needs are constantly um, arising. Um, We brought this up now because uh, of the amount of work that it takes for the three of us to run the department and the fact that we are elected officials and not professional water and sewer people. 
Um, so, management structure and government structure are, are things that, that concern us. Um, our goal, however, is to ensure that the management of the department is stable so that we can provide efficient operations, complete necessary capital projects, comply with regulatory requirements, and adjust to changes in town government structure. In order to do those kinds of things, um, Management needs to ensure that we have qualified operations and management staff. Um, I have to say that, that um, Alan and Eli and Rusty are, uh, are, are three of the best people that I've ever worked with anywhere. Um, and um, they have done an amazing job of of bringing the, the department up to where it is right now and, and again and looking towards the future to see what the department will need. Um, <clears throat> but we're old. <laughs> 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 um, and that, that, presents, that presents a challenge. Um, we also need the engineering, administrative, legal, and financial support services that are required. And again, we work with um, we work with uh, good engineering firms. Um, we have good legal services and good accounting services. Um, but the level of service required from these people and, and the level of professionalism required from our operators and the kinds of skills that they need have increased radically over the last 15 years. So it's, it's you know, no longer um, <clears throat> uh, a, a person that, uh, that just has the mechanical ability to deal with the systems, the valves and the pumps and, and so forth, and the electrical systems, it's now the computer systems and the financial management and all of that that, that go together um, that allow us to operate the department effectively. We have to keep up with regulatory and safety compliance. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons we did the safety trailer was um, was to make sure that we are in compliance with um, safety requirements when we go out and fix mains and and other problems. And the regulatory requirements change like daily, um, <laughs> um, and they add they add complexity and they add cost to the job. And then we need um, to make sure that we keep up with asset management planning. It's something that needs to be kept up um, <clears throat> on a weekly basis. So all of the computer systems that we have that, that are connected, GIS, um, CMMS, and asset management, we have to be able to operate those systems and keep them updated um, so that the system runs properly. That's the end of my presentation. Um, thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the applause. I really wasn't <laughs> expecting that. Um, does anyone have any questions? Uh, Dave? Um, yes, that was a wonderful presentation. I've heard a lot in my lifetime, and that's probably one of the best. Oh, thank you. And. Uh, you definitely have a monumental task ahead of you because basically you're changing the whole structure of the wastewater treatment plant and and the water. Mm -hmm. And over the next five to twenty years, which you had there, eight point seven five million dollars, a lot of money. Um, your overruns and stuff are certainly going to be astronomical from a contractor's point of view down there. Mm -hmm. They never come in on budget for sure, not that I've seen. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, 146,000 for SCADA, SCADA was it? SCADA. 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 Yeah. The 50,000 for engineering is just the beginning of what you got going there, those overruns. Um, we have yeah. paid for that. Pardon? We've already paid for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wish you luck. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the level of personnel and the skill is, you, you hit it right on the, on the nose. They're going to have to be pretty sharp because you're taking a town that's been putting out fires for the last 20 years and bringing it to the 21st century in a pretty short period of time. Yeah. Uh, so that is, uh, I'm glad I'm old too. I'd like to start when I was 30, but <laughs> I'm glad I'm on my way out. <laughs> um, my only two questions are, because I live on the end of that street, okay, and I'm sure you're expecting it, is you're separating and leaving solids out, correct? We're you're separating solids. We're separating non-biological non solids. Okay, that's those are plastics. Plastics. Okay, rags. so you're not, not separating waste solids. No, no. Okay, no. all right. Second question would be: In the future, are there going to be any more septage haulers? Because I notice you have a future place for that on your drawing. Um. We're, we're limited to the amount of septage that we can take in okay. because of the lagoons, Right. basically. When the lagoons are gone. Yeah. Um, when the lagoons are gone, well, I, I, it, it's hard to look that, that, far, that far in advance. Um, it's not the number of haulers so much as the amount that you take in. Um, because you could have 12 haulers or 20 haulers, but if they bring in the same amount, you've basically got the same amount of trips in there. But yes, but from my point of view, 12 to 20 is not what I'm looking for. Right. No, no, you're not looking for more haulers. Yeah, right. But even if the haulers bring in more sewage, the existing haulers right. bring in more sewage, which some of them want to do, mm -hmm. that will mean more trips in the peak months, basically. Right, May to November. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's basically May to October, but it, it, it varies on a yearly basis. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, no smell's going to be, no smell's going to change, get any different than what it is? Uh, it should no. go down. It should go down. Yeah. Well, there's no smell there now. I'm just saying we're not going to get any. I mean, but there, there, there is an air purification system, I believe, in the, okay. in well, the building. Yeah. All right. So the septage haulers right now are going to remain the same. The well, Rowles, the, right now the we Byrons. Have, yeah, yeah, we have 10 right now. Two, okay, 10 trucks. Them. Yeah, 10 haulers. 10, ten haulers. Yeah. How many trucks? I'm not sure. Rowell must have four or five. Sorry, I think. Rusty. Okay. There's probably 15 or 16 different trucks between all okay. hollows. Okay. So that's just going to maintain the way it is. Yeah. For the time being, we we should have um, the engineering estimates are that our income will increase. Um, somewhere between 15 and 30, 25 percent, just because we're measuring, right? Measuring the septage now instead of going by the honor system. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I have. Thank Other you. questions? I'm well, just, just wondering about the tank. Uh, you said it was getting old. Um, the water tank. Yeah. Yes, I'm just, it's just a concrete box, right? I mean, <laughs> oh, it's the big orange. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's a big, <laughs> big box. But why does it get old? I'm just curious. I mean, what? Oh, do you mean the water tower? Yeah, yes. it's not just a big box. Okay, what else is? What is wearing out? I just don't, don't understand. Everything ages. It is concrete, David. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you put water it, in the box, it wouldn't last long. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it okay. deteriorates. It, it does not last forever. Mm -hmm. Okay. It erodes. It last long. 
que... It's something we have to plan for because we know, just like everything else, we know it has a, um, a certain useful life. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about CIP is you can determine what the useful, you can determine a useful life, but sometimes maintaining equipment and refurbishing buildings and so forth extends the useful life um, out farther than that. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's, that's one of the things that gives you some flexibility with, um, with capital improvements and uh, rate setting and so forth. <clears throat> well, if there are no more questions, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, you will... Uh, uh, take a look at the, the data that we presented here, uh, both for our Warren article and, and for the, the Thompson Street project, and make your decision based on, on the factual information. <laughs>